I think we're seeing a lot of these birth pangs that Jesus spoke of, but we're also seeing this alignment of Russia, Iran, Turkey, and other countries forming this alliance against Israel. In the midst of the unrest in Israel, a new sign has emerged that could change everything we know about the end times. Over the past few years, we have witnessed the fulfillment of several prophecies, including the mysterious alignment of celestial bodies and the widespread acceptance of the mark of the beast in various nations. However, amidst these occurrences, one shocking sign connected to the four horsemen depicted in the book of Revelation seems to have gone unnoticed. What does this strange sign mean and why has it resurfaced now? Join us as we explore the new end time sign just appeared in Israel. Prophecies are held with regard in Israel by both the Jewish and Christian faiths, particularly within the sacred texts. They serve as insightful guideposts into future events, offering warnings or promises to believers. However, history has demonstrated that when individuals or communities disregard these prophecies, the consequences can be calamitous, leading to dire outcomes such as the devastating destruction of the Second Temple. One prophecy that instills terror is that of the Four Horsemen. The signs of their presence and the impending impact on Earth are becoming increasingly obvious. You don't need to look too far back. Just consider the events of the past five years worldwide and you'll see these signs becoming more apparent. In the Book of Revelation, Specifically in chapter 6, we encounter a passage that mentions the four horsemen. In this passage, a great scroll is seen in heaven, and the scroll is sealed with seven seals. Initially, no one is deemed worthy to open these seals and reveal the contents of the scroll. However, the Lamb of God, symbolizing Jesus, is found to be the only one worthy of this task. As the Lamb begins to open each seal, a series of devastating judgments is unleashed upon the earth. These judgments, known as the opening judgments of the tribulation period, are represented by four riders on distinctively colored horses. Each rider and horse symbolizes a different end-time sign that has now appeared in Israel. Now let's look at the first horseman. In the book of Revelation, specifically in chapter 6, verse 2, a remarkable scene unfolds as John witnesses the opening of the first of the seven seals. John's words paint a vivid picture of what he sees. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. This verse has captured the attention and imagination of many throughout history, as it holds symbolic significance and hints at a deeper meaning. Some have interpreted this white horse as a representation of the Antichrist mentioned in the biblical book of Daniel. In Daniel's prophecies, the Antichrist is described as an evil prince who will establish a seven-year peace treaty with many people and rise to power through his eloquent speeches and by overthrowing the rule of three other kings. According to this interpretation, the appearance of the white horse and its rider signals the arrival of the Antichrist and marks the beginning of a seven-year period of divine judgment upon the earth. This period is often referred to as the Tribulation, or the Great Tribulation, during which God's wrath and judgments are poured out upon the world. The white horse, with its rider holding a bow and wearing a crown, represents the Antichrist's deceptive and conquering nature. The bow symbolizes warfare and aggression, suggesting that the Antichrist will employ military might and political cunning to establish his dominion. The crown signifies his authority and power, which are granted to him, perhaps indicating a supernatural source behind his rise to prominence. To understand the signs that have now appeared in Israel, let's take a deep dive into who exactly is the Antichrist. The term Antichrist itself is not found in the book of Revelation but appears in the epistles of John, specifically in 1 John 2.18. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. The Bible John 2.22 states that the Antichrist denies the Father and the Son, and in 4, 3, it refers to those who oppose his teachings as the Antichrist. The Antichrist is described as someone who is against Christ and seeks to deceive and lead people astray from the truth. 
In the book of Daniel, there are references to a figure known as the Little Horn, or the Man of Sin. This person is portrayed as a powerful and arrogant ruler who exalts himself above all gods and persecutes the people of God. He is associated with the end times and is seen as an adversary of God's people. According to some interpretations, this figure in Daniel's prophecies is considered to be a precursor or foreshadowing of the Antichrist mentioned in other biblical texts. It is believed that the Antichrist will arise in the future and embody the characteristics of the little horn described in Daniel. In the book of Revelation, particularly in chapters 13 and 17, there are detailed descriptions of a beast and a harlot associated with the Antichrist. The beast is depicted as a powerful political and military entity that receives worship and authority from the world. The harlot represents a false religious system aligned with the beast, deceiving people and leading them away from the true worship of God, the second horseman. As the first seal was opened and the white horse and its conqueror emerged, John's vision continued with the opening of the second seal from the great scroll. To his astonishment, he beheld a second rider, this time mounted on a fiery red horse. The scriptures reveal that the one who sat on this horse was granted the power to strip peace away from the earth, resulting in people turning against each other and causing great bloodshed. The rider held a formidable sword, symbolizing the violence and conflict that would ensue. It is intriguing to note the contrast between the first rider on the white horse and the second rider on the red horse. The white horse rider came with the intention of conquering, yet he had no sword and seemingly brought a semblance of peace. In contrast, the second rider on the red horse arrived wielding a sword, signifying the deliberate removal of peace from the earth. Despite any promises of peace that the Antichrist may make, hostility will prevail as people rise up against each other, and true peace will elude them. It appears that the peace treaty orchestrated by the Antichrist will prove futile, and this might be a deliberate tactic to consolidate his power. It is reasonable to speculate that the Antichrist, in his pursuit of dominance, will resort to warfare against those who refuse to align with him under the peace treaty. Consequently, the absence of peace will unleash turmoil and chaos upon the world. The consequences of this complete absence of peace will undoubtedly be dire, and the plight of those living during this time will worsen rapidly. There will be no respite from the escalating troubles, for the Lamb of God continues to unseal the remaining scrolls, unveiling further revelations and events. The unfolding prophecy paints a vivid and sobering picture of a world in turmoil. The absence of peace, coupled with the relentless unveiling of the seals, suggests a time of immense suffering and tribulation. The successive opening of the seals foretells a series of catastrophic events that will unfold upon the earth bringing about widespread devastation and challenges. As the Lamb opens each seal, it is as if the intensity of the events increases, amplifying the already dire circumstances. The seals serve as a conduit for divine judgment and reveal the unfolding plan of God for the earth. The subsequent seals yet to be opened hold further revelations and judgments that will shape the course of history during this extraordinary period. The Third Horseman as the Lamb continued to open the seals, John's vision unveiled yet another rider. This time, a rider on a black horse emerged, carrying out a specific command on the earth. The command was related to the selling of food, where a measure of wheat would be sold for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. It is worth noting that the term penny referred to a Roman coin called the denarius, which was equivalent to a day's wages for an average laborer, particularly the soldiers in the Roman army. However, the term measure in this context denotes an amount smaller than a quart, representing what an individual would typically consume in a day. Essentially, this passage suggests that food prices will skyrocket, with an entire day's labor only providing enough food for personal consumption on that day. This raises concerns about how people will manage on weekends or support their families, and how they will secure other essential items. The world will plunge into poverty likely as a direct consequence of the global warfare that will be waged. In verse 5, the rider is depicted holding a pair of balances, indicating the careful weighing and measuring of goods. Additionally, in verse 6, he is commanded not to harm the oil and the wine. 
This further reinforces the notion of severe rationing taking place during this time of scarcity. To grasp a sense of what this rationing may be like, one can draw a parallel with the toilet paper shortage experienced in many stores in 2020, albeit on a much smaller scale. The imagery suggests that people will be meticulous in their allocation of resources, handling their wine and oil with caution. However, it is important to note that the opening of the third seal is not the end of the Lamb's revelations. There are still several remaining seals to be opened, indicating that there is more to come in this unfolding prophetic sequence. The Fourth Horseman As the Lamb continued to open the seals, the fourth seal revealed the arrival of the final rider. This rider was mounted on a pale horse, and based on the Greek word used by John to describe it, the horse was likely a pale green in color. What sets this rider apart from the others is that he has a name, and that name is Death. Following closely behind Death is Hell. In this passage, Death is granted power over one-fourth of the earth, with the authority to bring Death through various means. Death wields the sword, symbolizing warfare and violence, and also brings about death through hunger, disease, and attacks by wild animals. This suggests that the previous three horsemen were unleashed upon the earth in quick succession, almost simultaneously. The fourth horseman, Death, claims the lives of many through battle, referencing the wars initiated by the second horseman. Additionally, Death claims victims through hunger, alluding to the famine and rationing brought about by the third horseman. Furthermore, People are also killed during this time by wild animal attacks, emphasizing the perilous nature of the environment. Astonishingly, one-fourth of the Earth's population is affected by Death's arrival, and he is closely followed by Hell. Some interpretations propose that the reference to one-fourth of the Earth could signify an entire geographic region, such as North America, rising up and resisting the Antichrist, only to face complete extermination through warfare, famine, and attacks by wild animals as the Antichrist retaliates against them. While this is a possible understanding, it is important to note that interpretations of such symbolic passages may vary. The imagery presented in the fourth seal underscores the severity of the events unfolding. The pale horse and its rider, Death, evoke a sense of dread and foreboding. The authority granted to Death to claim lives through multiple means highlights the devastating consequences of these tumultuous times. The presence of hell following closely behind amplifies the gravity of the situation, suggesting a descent into darkness and spiritual turmoil. What does the sign of the four horsemen represent today? The black horse mentioned in the book of Revelation represents an event of extreme inflation. Inflation occurs when prices skyrocket, causing the value of currency to erode over time. This poses a threat to society and devalues money, making it difficult for the common man to afford basic necessities. However, the affluent still have access to luxuries, as hinted by the phrase, See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. In our world today, inflation affects people differently based on their economic means. The opening of the third seal in Revelation, which reveals the black horse, signifies impending economic turmoil and suffering. The Black Rider symbolizes famine, with scales in hand indicating food rationing due to scarcity. This scenario has been witnessed throughout history in various parts of the world. In the modern context, inflation is a familiar concept, measuring the increasing prices of goods and services over time. The passage in Revelation depicts prices reaching a point where a day's wage can only buy the ingredients for bread. This mirrors the real-world impact of inflation where the cost of living becomes burdensome. We can relate these ancient verses to current economic challenges. The Consumer Price Index, CPI, reflects rising prices across goods and services, with recent data showing a 3.7% increase in August. This rise erodes individuals' and families' purchasing power, making it harder to afford basic needs. While inflation rates may fluctuate, the overall trend is upward dispelling the misconception that a lower inflation rate means cheaper goods. Instead, it signifies that prices are still rising, albeit at a slower pace. Understanding this distinction is crucial in comprehending the economic challenges people face in a world where inflation affects their ability to meet basic needs. Despite the increasing prices, although at a slower pace, these are indicators of a prophetic event. 
the imagery of the black horse and its rider slowly entering the world stage resonates with our current economic struggles. Amidst uncertainties, there is an encouraging message to share. Inflation may trigger stress about the future, but it is crucial to remember that a higher power is at play. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is more significant than current economic concerns. Throughout history, no Christian has been forsaken, regardless of the rising inflation rate. What we witness might just be the beginning, with the Black Rider symbolizing famine and economic challenges potentially intensifying. However, as believers, fear is not our intended state. In challenging times, turning to the scriptures provides comfort. Psalm 23 takes on new depth as David shifts from speaking about God in the third person to addressing God directly. In the valley of the shadow of death, David's conversation becomes deeply personal. This shift emphasizes a direct and personal communion with God, reminding us that He is with us and alleviating the fear of the future, the present, or economic challenges. Matthew 10, 29, 31 reaffirms God's care, noting that even sparrows, which are sold for a penny, do not fall without the Father's knowledge. These verses emphasize God's care for the smallest details of our lives, encouraging us not to fear, but to greatly value Him. For those feeling alone or overwhelmed, it is crucial to remember that you are not abandoned. God is with you, watching over your family. While worldly concerns may seem overwhelming, it is important to recognize their temporary nature in the grand scheme of eternity. These challenges are fleeting, and heaven awaits, where we will spend eternity with God, free from the worries of this world. For Christians today, the four horsemen in the Bible may appear to have power over a part of the world. But even more catastrophic events are on the horizon in the end times. Christians will face these horsemen, experiencing death, disease, famine, and trials, especially due to the actions of the Antichrist. During these trying times, Christians can find hope in Jesus, who will eventually conquer all hardships. Thanks for watching another episode of Beyond Discovery. While you're still here, click on the other videos you see on your screen right now.